Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Global Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I continue the Starship Station construction and test of the pass-through system with all the fancy little decks inside these starships. And we are going to finally attach the second starship to the station. Uh, my intention was just to have two. And so this will functionally complete the main body of the station, but then we'll have to figure out things to do with it. And to do this, we have to get some extra docking ports and also hatches to seal off the bits of the Harmony module that don't need to be exposed to space. Right now it's very open. So we need to close those bits off and I had made the uh, ISS hatch, well I adapted the ISS hatch from the NASA model of the ISS. And so that is a separate part that can be attached to any location where we need a hatch. So we're carrying a Leonardo plus a solar array on the back of this starship. And again, the starship is the passenger version, that's why we can't put it inside. Uh, though for uh, packing both of these, well, probably both of these would fit, maybe? It'd be tough. So yeah, we have them on the outside for now. And here we go with the shutdown of Super Heavy. We're still launching out of Kuru because that's where we were and I just didn't take any more time. This was all recorded during live streams and switching locations is tedious. It means that there's more time. As it is, I already spent a lot of downtime that my audience has to suffer through, so I tried to minimize it when possible. We did put a nose cone on the front end of the Leonardo module. That is a supply module. It's carrying quite a bit of supplies for us here. And here we are. Oh, yes, because we are just on the vacuum engines, they didn't have enough control authority to deal with the fact that these heavy modules are on the back of Starship, so I had to ignite the sea level engines to get control authority back. We were going out of whack there. Uh, if I had moved the Leonardo and the solar ray further forward, it probably would have been better. So then it probably wouldn't have gotten out of balance. But anyway, here we are making adjustments for the rendezvous. A lot of that was done with RCS because again, lighting the Raptor engines is very high thrust weight ratio, especially when Starship is so empty. And I didn't want to do that for fine adjustments. Now we needed to get the solar ray off of the back of Starship. And then we needed to get a Kerbal out to take the decoupler off of the front end of that. I didn't want to use a stack separator and we'll talk about the docking ports in a sec. I placed a bunch of cameras. This is sort of a camera test, a Hullcam BDS test to see which cameras would be best and what kind of placement would be best. And not all of this has to do with Starship's interior specifically. Some of this is being tested out for other stations. Uh, if you have seen my Space Station 3 video, you might know what I'm thinking of doing eventually. And uh, that is a whole other thing on a different scale. But anyway, here we are with our Kerbal. Uh, to get that decoupler off. The reason why we have a decoupler there is because with the pass-through dock, oh and we have to get this nose cone off too, so that goes poof. But the reason we have a decoupler there is because the pass-through docking ports, if I place them together in the VAB, they don't want to separate. In flight, there's no problem. If they are docked together, they can separate and it's fine. But if they're pre-attached in the VAB, they don't want to separate, I don't know why. So anyway, that is why we needed the decoupler. But unfortunately, we couldn't take the decoupler off because it was the root part of that solar panel assembly and everything else was a child part to it. So I had to attach a docking port to somewhere else on the solar panel array so that we could dock it to the station temporarily and then we would be able to take off the decoupler. Once it's docked to the station, uh, the station parts will be the root part. I couldn't place this docking port on the back end. There probably wouldn't have been enough clearance anyway, but it didn't let me either. So I had to place it on one of the tugs docking ports, which is weird. But there it is. And so that being done, we could move this towards the station and temporarily dock it on that weird floating docking port. Awkward as that is. So here is the approach. And this gives sort of a sense of the size of the ISS. So these are ISS solar arrays. This is just one of the normal solar arrays on the ISS. We aren't ready to extend the arrays yet, but once we are, you'll be able to see how that all works out. But first, again, we need to get that decoupler off. So we deploy one of our Kerbals in the station. And here, Karori is floating through. 
and exiting and getting to that decoupler which is now removable. So there it is, all this assembled. Grory goes back in. This image is sort of nice. There's sort of a 2001 Space Odyssey aspect to it, really. I need more props, though. Stuff that the Kerbals can move about. That's one thing I want to develop. Lots of stuff inside that the Kerbals can manipulate is a goal of mine. But anyway, we are now docking the Solar Truss on its correct port. But this location isn't the best, necessarily. I might want to rethink that. But anyway, first we grab this weird docking port on the tug and we can now place it on the Harmony module in the location where we had lost a docking port before. I remember it floated off because of a glitch with the Kerbal. So Karori goes back in and it is one of those locations that we need a hatch on. And now we extend the solar panels. So again, these are just the normal ISS solar rays. These are not mine. Uh, this was from the old ISS mod. So just took it and I have not adapted the ISS panels from the NASA ISS model and I don't think I need to. These look pretty good. So I don't feel a pressing need for different ones of these. Whereas the ISS modules from the old mod obviously didn't have the interiors but also didn't look perfect on the outside either. Anyway, here we are docking the Starship to its location. I decided we needed to do this because the tugs are basically running out of propellant anyway. So if we tried to take the Leonardo off now, which would be better for clearance at that docking location, then I was worried that we'd be left with tugs that didn't have any propellant. So docking first seemed like a good idea. There is propellant in the Leonardo. The question is whether the tugs would have gotten to it before running out of fuel. And here we are docking right over Florida, as it turns out. And now we can top off the propellant in the tugs and then use them to move Leonardo to another docking port on the Harmony module. Leonardo is also passed through. There are little supply packages inside. Those were from NASA, though the look of the supply packages inside could do some work. They weren't the best textures. Not a lot to see about that. I was thinking of making pizzas. <laughs> I have all these plans about uh, especially station interiors and we'll, we may be using this station to test some of that out to see how it looks in the future and whether I can have the Kerbals place certain things properly. One major item is the sleeping bursts. I have made sleeping bursts for the Kerbals, but we haven't placed them inside the station, so I need the Kerbals to actually put them in, and we'll see whether that works out or not. So anyway, there is the Leonardo module attached to the station, and that is how it's going to look for now. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.